As we get a live view from outside the Quest airlock, we have confirmation that the spacewalk itself began at 8.11 a.m. Central Time today as the astronauts turn their suits to battery power. And can making smoke. All right, and that's complete. Thermal hatch is open. Copy. You are now go to egress the airlock. Keep on egress the airlock. Copy. And Sultan, as he egresses, your next step is going to be to transfer the crew lock bags out if you want to get eyes on crew lock bag on two or three. Okay, I was expecting the IDA bag. Uh, no, IDA is third. All right, copy. Yes, you can pass those bags in any order. Okay. All right, copy. Hey, bye, Sultan. I want to make sure I'm in good orientation here and get my. And Steve, as you get set, uh, please also turn on your HECA. All right, let me get myself in a good configure. Get my waist tether. First out of the hatch this morning is NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. He is EV-1. You can differentiate between he and Sultan al -Niyadi by the red stripe that is on Bowen's spacesuit. And heck, uh, and I got a good green light for Hecka. Okay, Sultan, I'm ready for a bag. Okay, I'm sending bag number three first. Bag number three. And I know you're tracking, but crew lock bags two and three are going to be stowed on the airlock uh, zenith of the starboard airlock toolbox on 556. Five, five, six. Five, five, six. Crew members start their day with Sultan Al Nayadi passing out some of the uh, passing out some of the bags that will be used to Steve Bowen. He will then stow those on a handrail for use later. Airlock that. Got it. Coming back. Got it. Okay, here it goes. Put that up on the viewing extender. Thank you. As you can see, the color is changing outside of the International Space Station. Uh, we will be entering an orbital sunrise, orbital daylight, very soon. The lights on the helmet camera of Steve Bowen down in the bottom left of your frame are currently on. The International Space Station sees 16 sunrises and sunsets a day, so these spacewalkers will work in alternating light and darkness throughout their time today. Crew lock back three, the five five six on the red. My red. And we copy Steve crew lock bag three on five five six.
And, Sultan, uh, just a reminder, the large, small rets from these crew lock bags are going to get stowed on the airlock D-ring extender. We have coffee, and uh, the first bag, number three, our red is already on the D-ring extender. Copy. Okay, so far I'm ready for bag number two. Wait, wait. ready. Flight control start med ops and holding. Yes. Okay, when you request the airlock to do not, please check and see the size. Uh, that's fine as long as we get it down to some. Bag number two. These bags at Anayati are is uh, transferring to Bowen are stored on the same handrail. They'll be used later. They contain tools for uh, different tasks. Releasing the airlock, and I'm ready for it. Thanks. Uh, bag number two, heading up. A small red is going to be ready. And that crew lock bag also goes to 556. And that large small ret sultan also goes to airlock ding ring extender. And the next item to pass out will be the GoPro. I'll be on and have it. All right. number two is attached to 556 with the integral tether. The back three is on with a ret, back two is on with the integral tether. Okay, we copy both crew locks on 556. Nicely done. And the next thing is to retrieve and install the GoPro. All right. That's ready for your seat. Yep. My red is wrapped around the handle, and I'll have to get take that off first. Flight is yours for the safer hand control module. Okay. Copy that the handle is up doesn't necessarily mean the hand control module is deployed. That takes us to the generic system crib sheet 2-182. GoPro is all 
And I have that ready for my mini workstation. You can release the other end, Sultan. Okay, and work. On your way. Alright. Give us the hook, Bill. Thank you. That end, and uh, how does that look on the other side? That's right there. Let's just add a little bit more. And Steve, those look uh, those look pretty good. Uh, if you can just kind of back up a little right. bit and give us a good HECA scan, and then we'll move on to the left mid strut. Right. Thank you. Okay, so. That looks full metal exposed. And for Steve, uh, we are good with the MLI uh, on the upper struts. Nice work. So you can move on to the left mid strut. We expect the, there was an MLI gap between the collar bolts and the mounting bracket. But similar words to what I gave Sultan, uh, if you see other MLI uh, that looks out of config, uh, we will. We would love it if you could snug it up a little bit, but we're expecting the left mid strut between the collar bolts and the mounting bracket. Mid strut between the collar bolts and the mounting bracket. All right, I will take a look. And Sultan, that's uh, I see you kind of working the collar bolts on that strut. Uh, that is that's definitely a little bit out of config, especially on the mass canister side. Uh, so we'll definitely take a good cinch up on that one. And for both of you, if it's possible after we fix the MLI to not translate on it, that would be a preferable thing. Yeah, trying to work on that. <laughs> 